Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd still on the shore. He spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. Some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred, or sixty, or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we heard from the book of Exodus, and we have yet another example of a type in the Old Testament story of the Exodus. As we've been saying, uh, one of the most common expectations of the prophets of the Old Testament was that when the Messiah would come, he would be like a newer version of Moses. All throughout the Old Testament, there are different types of the Messiah, there's types of Mary, there's types of the church, and of course, there's types of the Eucharist. And so Moses gave the people manna to eat, and so Jesus, the new Moses, would give us a new and more spectacular manna to eat. And this is not mere theological speculation. We know from John chapter 6 that Jesus specifically described himself as the new manna the new bread that has come down from heaven. And for many of us, we're familiar with this idea. We're familiar with the basic idea of the manna, that there was this miraculous bread that the Israelites received every day. And so we can see how that foreshadows the Eucharist. But the more that you dive into the Jewish understanding of the manna, the more it sheds light on this. Dr. Brent Petrie, he's an American biblical scholar, and he's very much brought this to the forefront to many Catholics because of his books, but also in the midst of scholarship. And when you begin to understand the Jewish understanding of the manna, it's very interesting. Uh, the Jews obviously saw that it was a miraculous bread, but they also saw it as an eternal bread. Many of the rabbis, when they commented on this miracle of the manna, they said that the manna was already in heaven from the beginning of the world, prepared for the Israelites. Uh, the Psalms, like Psalm 78, describes the manna as the bread of angels, angelic bread. As Catholics, we have the famous song, the Panis Angelicus, which means the angelic bread, right? describing the Eucharist. Uh, if you read the book of Exodus carefully, you pay attention to what they did with the manna uh, when they were finished. Uh, God commanded the Israelites when they arrived to the promised land, he commanded them to keep some of the manna and place it in a golden container and then place it in the tabernacle. And I know that might seem really strange to us because we've never seen a miraculous bread put in a golden container and then placed in the tabernacle. I'm just trying to, trying to imagine it for a moment. Right? Also the miracle of the manna was not just a miracle of bread, but it was a miracle of flesh. Then in the evening they received quail to eat. And so the manna was not just a miracle of bread, but also of flesh. Again, obvious connections with the Eucharist there. At the book of Exodus, when it describes the manna, what it was like, it says it was like wafers made with honey. Again, wafers. It reminds us of the Eucharist. And presumably the reason why they made it with honey was because honey was a foreshadowing of the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. The Israelites only actually received the manna as they were wandering through the desert on their way to the promised land. And so likewise with us in the Eucharist. When we are in heaven, we will not have the Eucharist. The Eucharist is our food for the journey as we journey to the heavenly promised land. There's all these different connections with the manna 
for heaven in the book of Exodus. It's one of the most obvious typologies of the Eucharist in the Old Testament. God preparing us for his eventual miracle of the true bread 